seconds, doesn't it? <laughs> hello, everybody, and welcome to Virtual Trek Con with Sir Rock Lofton, as always. Hello, hello. We are joined by Mr. Robert Beltran. You know him, you love him as Chicote and Voyager. How are you, sir? I'm good, and I'm not going to wear a mask. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got a nice face shield in front of us. This is even. This is this is the only mask you're going to see. <laughs> well, we've got six feet apart, so we can still make it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So great. I'm uh, nice of you guys to invite me. I'm happy to be here with you. Yeah, it's great. Uh, I think we have a little technical uh, difficulties with uh, Ryan's feed, but how have you been, Robert? How have you been? Very good. Very good. Um, my wife still loves me. My daughter still loves me. Um, we had, oh man, Sorak, we had the, this cute, such a cute dog, um, little Coco, a little Maltese. And it was just the cutest, most intelligent, uh, per, and this personality that, anyway, a predator got a hold of it. Just, oh no. She was along for about 30 minutes and came outside and she was, uh, I, I, I don't want to go into it too much, but yeah. we just got uh, her her little sister from the same uh, breeder. Mm -hmm. So she's um, helping us get over the, the loss of uh, Coco. Uh, my daughter named her Kiwi and she, it's a perfect name for her. She's a little eight, 10, ten week old um, Maltese. So, um, it's kind of helping us get over the loss of uh, Coco. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah. So other than that, um, uh, you know, since I'm like, you know, since actors are always semi-retired, um, the, uh, you know, the COVID, uh, lock lockdown hasn't, uh, bothered me too much. More so my daughter and my wife. Yeah. Are you able to keep busy and in, in your retirement phase? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I, I like to read. Uh, I've been studying uh, music, composing for a long time now, but now I'm getting into, I'm getting, uh, I'm getting into writing, uh, trying to write a fugue, a fugue now, which is, uh, I always thought that if I could write a fugue, then I'm, I'm pretty advanced uh, composition, but it's, it's just for right now. It's for uh, four part chorus, you know. Um, uh, I, I know nothing about what a fugue is. Uh, I'm thinking of a few good men. And yeah. I'm, sure that's, <laughs> I'm sure that's not it. <laughs> fugue, fugue, F U G U E. And basically, the closest thing to it is a round, you know, when you go, um, uh, you, you sing, um, London, London Bridge is falling down, falling down, then the, the next voice takes, uh, takes it from the London Bridge, and both both voices are going at, you know, and then you add Got a third it. and a fourth. Um, they do so that that's a lot with I'm, row, row, row your boat. Yeah, right. they do it a lot on that. Um, so it, it's... It's not the same as imitation, which is a different kind of composition. It's a uh, fugue is uh, much more complex, and so I'm I'm having fun. You know, I'm I'm doing things to keep my mind from atrophying. <laughs> yeah, there's it's a lot of that going right now. <laughs> it's important. Hey, uh, yeah. so uh, sorry about the technical difficulties. Uh, Sirak uh, Garrick was messing with you this week, but I guess you realize <laughs> I felt left. I felt left out. <laughs> That's how Garrett shows his love. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Robert, real quick, um, actually, Polar, Polar is sucks is the name. It says, nice to see you, Robert. Grew up watching you. So thank you very much for that great comment. But thank you. Uh, you were telling us right before we started recording that you are in a new short film called Butterflies. Uh, I just checked out, I only had time to check out the art real quick, but the art looks amazing. And you're saying that the uh, cinematography is awesome. Can you tell us about it? Yeah, well, it's it's written and directed by Ken Brisboys, <clears throat> who um, 
we became friends, our families became friends because our daughters went to the same school um, when they were in uh, preschool. Um, and so, you know, I, I, I took my daughter to the park one day and she was playing in the sand. We were both making, you know, sand castles and uh, she saw she saw somebody, she goes, Lane, it was her friend from school, right? Who also came with her father. And so I met him and I don't think we, we even talked about show business or anything. I didn't know he was a writer, director. And later we found out, right? So um, eventually he sent me this script called Butterflies and I read it and I was amazed at how beautifully written it was. Just two mm. people in a hotel, um, a um, um, great story. I don't wanna to give too much away about it, but uh, people have been checking it out and it's been getting almost all uh, excellent, excellent uh, reviews from everybody. So that even really people that don't like me, they, they like this. <laughs> <laughs> so it's two people in the movie. Is that, is it the whole movie? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's about 14 minutes long. And, um, I play this kind of like go getter, uh, you know, like, uh, high, uh, uh, wall street guy, you know, who, uh, usually meets with a, particular girl that he has his assignations with, you know, who he likes her because she's in a wheelchair and she's really uh, handicapped. But this time there's another girl there that he didn't want, doesn't want. And they have this um, little tete a tete together and it's very, very beautifully written. Yeah, I'm, I'm anxious to see that because, you know, there hasn't been a that much original stuff and new things coming out lately. So right. I'd be, I'd be excited to, to have something that stimulate the senses and, and tell a beautiful story. I think you'll like it. I really do. Um, I'm, I, I point people to it, um, uh, unashamedly because I think it's really good. Oh, good. We do have one review here. Uh, cherry pie says I watched on Amazon prime fabulously intricate story. Thank you, Cherry Pie. If you were to describe it in one word, would you say intricate? Or would you? The, the, the story is complex and it has uh, sort of, uh, as you dig deeper into the revelations of the characters, yeah, it's like peeling an onion, you know, things come out. Sure. And it's, everybody yeah. at home, we've got uh, the link in the description box of this video. So after this video is over, just go in the description box click on the link, check it out, uh, like Sorok and I will. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and um, the girl that pl that plays in it with me is, uh, it's her first film. She's, um, she's about in her early 20s and she's just terrific. Hmm, that's great. And beautiful. I, I, everybody <laughs> I wants wonder, to check out. Uh, uh, gorgeous. <laughs> Well, I'll definitely check it out. Go ahead, sir. Um, are there any any roles, Robert, that you feel like you wish you would like to play that you haven't played already? There are. I mean, you know, um, I'm getting a little visitor visitor here. My daughter has brought me Aww. kiwi. Ah, uh, it's kiwi. It's a, tri <laughs> it's a triple with <laughs> eyes. <laughs> is that cute? Yes. Is that, that cute is or what? Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. How old is Kiwi? She's about nine weeks, I think. Oh. Oh wow. You want to you want to sit on my lap? Come on. It's a little loofah. Yeah. She's, she's adorable. <laughs> Maltese, uh, Maltese dogs are adorable. They're really smart. They're very frisky, and uh, they're they're really fun. Fun to she be. She seems she seems well behaved right now. Surprisingly, for nine weeks. Yeah. Yeah, she is actually. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> so, uh, what was the question? Oh, yeah. Well, <clears throat> yeah, there are there are some things I want to do. Um, you know, I, when, when it comes to film and television, you're sort of you're sort of uh, stuck with whatever they you audition for or whatever your agent says. Hey, you want to audition for this? And you read it and you go, Oh, no, not really. Or yes, <laughs> you know. Um, 
so um, I'm mostly thinking theater stuff before I, before I can't memorize anything anymore. I, I can't walk across the stage without without a cane or something, you know. Um, so you're not that you're not that close <laughs> to it. But yeah. No, no, not yet, not yet. <laughs> I'm still pretty good, but um, so you know, I'd like to do some Ibsen. Mm. Um, I'd like to do some Shakespeare, of course. Uh, in Ibsen, there's a great play called uh, the, the Wild Duck, and the guy who plays the father. Ibsen's so great because all the characters are so complex and, and uh, damaged. They are so damaged. Um, and I'm starting to go back to Edward Albee, and he's, he's incredible. There's a couple of Edward Albee plays that I would love to do, or direct. Um, and, and then Shakespeare, you know, uh, those are the ones that come immediately to mind. I'd like to do Othello. Um, wow. Hopefully hopefully there won't be a backlash. But I, I always tell people the Moors were in Spain and they they, they intermingled with the Spaniards. Right. So um, I might have Moorish blood. I don't know. You know? I do, I do but, have more. I do have Moorish blood in me. Do you really? Sure. Yeah, because of my Spanish side. Um, yeah. But yeah, anybody that has Spanish blood in them is going to have some North African in them, uh, which is always really interesting because then you see here in California, we've got architecture that is very uh, Mexican and Hispanic in nature, which came over from Spain, which came yeah. from North Africa originally. So we act, it's like we, we've yeah. got all the roots in there. Anyway, what were you it's saying? It's all interconnected for sure. Mm -hmm. So uh, Othello's one, um, I'd like to do... Um, the Winter's Tale, and I'd like to do The Tempest, and Macbeth before too late. Before it gets too late, and I I, I can't do sword fighting, so we'll we'll see. So you like a lot of Shakespeare stuff? Well, I like because I because I started off in the theater, and I love the theater. I like the the I like the challenges that those great roles offer an actor, right? hugely uh, psychological, uh, it, uh, you know, the depth of, of the psych psychological um, state of mind that they're in and that they go through during the course of the play is um, for an actor, you just can't beat that. Same with Ibsen, same with Arthur Miller. There's a couple of Arthur Miller plays I would love to do and O'Neill. Um, so, yeah. You know, I'd love to see you in the Tempest. I think that would be amazing. What's the uh, what's the older character's name? That the dad. What's his name in the Tempest? Yeah, his name is anyway, that, Prospero. Can, Prospero. Yes, Prospero. That'd yeah. be awesome. The magician, right? Mm -hmm. Who renounces his magic at the end and yeah. spoilers? It's still new. No sound. Anybody no, no, can we, hear me. We can hear you. We see you and hear you, Ciro. Hey, hello. We lost. We, we lost you just for a brief you, second. <laughs> You're good. Yeah. I can't hear yes, you. Sir. Ryan's morphing a little bit. Uh, well, the good news is, Robert, is that there's you're having zero issues at all. Okay. <laughs> you're like your audio is perfect. Your video is perfect. Uh, right. Ciro and I. Are just oh, I, 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 I just I took my microphone and unplugged it and plugged it back, and I, I got sound all of a sudden. Oh, so. okay. Cool. Figured it out. So um, I do. Let's let's change gears for a second, uh, Robert, and talk about your favorite subject, Voyager. Yes. Uh, very quickly, um, you've probably been asked every single question there is to be asked about Voyager in your 25 years since joining that show. But here's a question that I have not heard the answer to mm -hmm. uh, by you. Uh, Myth Dustard says, Robert, what was your interactions with the writers like on Voyager? I mean, they probably, <laughs> did, they probably didn't come to the set too often, but if they no, did. No, they were there all the time. Way oh, really? too much. <laughs> yeah. Way too much. Um, <clears throat> my interactions were really good when Jerry Taylor was still there and uh, Michael, Mike, uh, Sorry, Mike Pillar, Michael Pillar. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. Loved them. They were great writers, and they um, they had a feel for Chicote. I thought 
Ken, Ken Biller also. Um, in general, after about the third year, I just thought, you know what? I just want to do my work as an actor. I don't want to do some playwriting and I, I mean, uh, screenwriting. And I, I, as long as they don't have me doing something too stupid or, you know, embarrassing. Um, although I, I think they got away with several, with that several times. Um, really? You know, you know how it is, Sarap. You just want to do your work, man. You don't want to have to deal with all the other issues like. Uh, you know, you get sometimes you get the script on a Sunday night, and you know you, you got to be at work at five thirty to get into makeup, and they just send it. To you you get the script at eleven or twelve, and then you know you're not going to get any sleep if you work on this on your scene, uh, maybe two or three hours at the most. So it just becomes so, such a hassle, and you just go, you know what? I'm going to cut out everything, and just concentrate on what they give me, and uh, unless I can't take it, uh, uh, I'll just, I'll just do it or, or I'll just make a quick phone call. Hmm. Did you find the was directors? There... Uh, go ahead, Sirach. Yeah. Sir. No, no. I, I was going to ask if there was more of that in the first two seasons and then if you just said, all right, I'm throwing my hands up in the air in the third season or was there more fights and, and stuff like that? Well, the thing is uh, with, with Jerry and Michael, I could call them and say, hey, what about this? Hey, what about this? And they were very receptive, you know. Um, with the others, um, and, and it wasn't always with the others. Um, it wasn't. It, it was the it was the quality of. Sometimes they always had one good scene, maybe you know, per episode, but there were like maybe two or three that were just kind of throwaway scenes, I felt. You know, anybody could have done them. Anybody, any one of the characters could have set them. And, and uh, so that didn't seem very challenging for me. I like some kind of a challenge, you know. Mm. Uh, I remember when we were, we would always get together with the writers, would invite the actors uh, individually to have dinner with them to talk over the, the upcoming new season, right? So in one of those, I just I just said, look, guys, they asked me, what do you want? What do you want, Robert? What do you want? You know, I said, well, oh, I didn't they, want to go. Close... They were close talkers on you there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what do you want, Robert? They were right across the table like, what do you yeah. want? <laughs> I said, I didn't want sushi, that's for sure. Uh, but um, <laughs> the famous sushi place. Uh, sushi <laughs> yeah. Did you go there, Sirach? I'm sure you did. Uh, I've but, heard stories. I've heard stories. Yeah. So I just said, look, guys, I just want one good scene. One good scene every episode. One good scene that it's not on the bridge. One good scene when it's not always with Kate. Let me have a scene with Garrett. Let me have a scene with Tuvok. Let me have a scene with... You know, it uh, seemed like I was always talking to, to Kate, you know, and just, and everybody else, I was just saying, hey, how you doing? Hey, Captain, can we talk in the quarters, you know? Um, and so that's that's all I uh, I ever asked of them. But um, at, that, at that one dinner, that's when they did come up with a boxing episode for me that I really liked. Um, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it was Joe Minoski script. Mm -hmm. Why do you think they, it was so difficult to, for them to write for Chicote and have so much? Uh, I don't know. You know what? People, I, when they would have interviews with other actors or, or when the writers were interviewed by certain magazines and stuff, mm. I would hear that they said, well, you know, he's the first officer, you know, and first officers are always difficult. I don't know. What? <laughs> what? First officers? Uh, Come on, that's a bad excuse. You know, that's a bad excuse. Because I'm not a first officer before I'm a human being. I'm a human being first, who happens to be the first officer on the. And I figured if if you can, if you can write something really good occasionally, then you can do it all the time if you just put some effort into it. Mm. But maybe I made them angry. I don't know. You know, uh, with the 
first officer thing, Sirach, you come from a show where a first officer was incredibly written for. And, and the other thing I want to say about that very quickly is maybe thinking of it that way is the wrong way to look at it. And this is me, you know, just coming from the fan's perspective, but you weren't a first officer. You were the captain of your own ship that was assimilated into another group, but they could have written for you as a captain that's working with another captain. That's another way to look at it. Where were you in those days, Ryan? <laughs> I was, getting, I was getting, getting into trouble as a kid. <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. That's that's certainly something that they could they could have used. Um, well, I, you know, so I, I would get uh, a little frustrated sometimes, um, mm -hmm. and sometimes I would, uh, you know, Sirak, when when you're getting ready to do your close up, and uh, in in between those moments where they say action and they're saying, hold on, hold on, got to, got to fix a light here, tweak a light here, and you're waiting for them to say action. Well, hold on, we just need a few more minutes, a few more seconds. And in, when those, uh, in those moments when they had the camera running, you know, but they hadn't said action yet, that's when I could yeah. slip in some things, you know, like I said, hey, well, because uh, we used to have a uh, dress up for Halloween, you know, on the set, mm -hmm. everybody used to come dressed and then we would have a, uh, uh, a prize for the best <laughs> for the best um, costume. And there was one of those moments where the camera was running, running and they were tweaking something. And I said, hey, I'm going to be coming as a script and scare the shit out of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the word got back to me in the dailies that the writers weren't too happy about that. Oh, they heard that. <laughs> yeah. Now, heard before that. we move on to the next thing, I've got to ask you, what was the best costume in the seven years of Halloween? Besides the, the script idea, of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was a, uh, it was always one of the crew because they usually had the time to do it. Um, mm -hmm. I, and I can't remember what it was. I can't remember. But it was yeah, a big so funny We'll it was go a with big script day. Then. It was a big day, you know, dress up uh, Halloween when Halloween came around and St. Patrick's Day because Kate used to, uh, you know, pay for a, a feast, uh, an Irish feast uh, hmm. every St. Patrick's Day. Nice. Yeah. I, I'd like to see you at more conventions, Robert. I, is that something that you kind of stay away from or? Or are you just kind of when your schedule permits that you do? Uh, it's mostly my, honestly, it's mostly my distaste uh, for airports and, and flying. I, I don't mind when I'm there. I just cannot stand uh, being, uh, especially flying overseas, you know, to Europe. That is just so long. Uh, it, it, uh, and, and I, I rarely can sleep on the plane. So I'm, I'm spending two or three days just recovering from the flight. A and the, the, um, the convention is going on and I'm having to, you know, try to stay awake signing, signing photos with, you know, with those huge lines that they have at, uh, at, uh, Fe uh, at the Federation, Fe uh, FedCon. FedCon. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just, it's just so hard. Um, that's mainly the reason, honestly. I just don't like the travel. Wow, uh, I understand. Yeah. Do you uh, do you drive up to Vegas when during Star Trek Las Vegas? No, no that 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 would be torture. I just, I mean, the one hour flight <laughs> is torture enough. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that, that Greyhound bus, uh, uh, like uh, Southwest Airline, you know. Um, no, I don't mind that. Short flights, you know, to Texas, uh, you know, Minneapolis or something. Those are fine. Sure. Even even the, the East Coast is fine. But going over to Europe is, is kind of tough these days. Cool. Somebody so says uh, very quickly, he was interesting in Tuvok's holodeck simulation. Pirate Chakotay. Pirate Chakotay? The... Uh... Tuvok's holodeck simulation. Oh, he was interesting in Tuvok's holodeck simulation. Really? Okay. You had a that. lot of great. You had a lot of great moments. Um, 
it did it did kind of make me wonder if like the writers were like, well, rather than give you one good moment in every episode, why don't we just give you one great episode out of every few? You know, maybe that was their way of compromising. That would have been nice. Yeah, that would have been nice. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you mentioned Michael Piller, and you know a lot of people don't have the opportunity to really get, or didn't have the opportunity to get to know him, but he was a really uh, caring guy, I thought, and thoughtful. And um, yeah. mm. every time I saw him, he was he was just a, a real genuine person, and I enjoyed the, the times we shared together. So, yeah, um, you know, people don't understand that because they don't have these interviews with Michael Piller. You know, he, he left the world too soon. But yeah. he was just an awesome man, awesome guy. No, I agree with you totally. He was uh, always encouraging and um, out out for the best for your character. You know, he was um, he was very um, he was looking out for Chakotay. I know that. Yeah, mm, really, that's great. Yeah, it's great to know. You know, a lot of people here keep asking and mentioning uh, the new Picard series. Have you seen any of it? And if so, or no, I didn't even know it was going on. <laughs> really? <laughs> I haven't seen it. No. If they, where, where do you see it anyway? I don't even know where, where uh, what the uh, CBS All the, Access. You can watch CBS. it on CBS All Access. Yeah, it started oh. uh, January twenty third of this year. Went ten weeks, and um, that was now the first season is done. Um, I can tell you off off air. We can, I can share with you the the information on how to check it out. Uh, but what's Are they doing the second up, season? Yeah, second and third. Yeah. Okay. Uh, eventually, if if it ever happened, you know, if we're ever able to start production again, um, is that something you would consider? I mean, it's it's twenty years in the future after Voyager comes back to the Alpha Quadrant, so it's basically been twenty years since then, anyway. Um, so people are people from Voyager, Deep Space Nine, and Next Generation are able to reprise their roles as basically the age they are now. Is that something? How you convenient. Would, is that something you would consider <laughs> if if uh, CBS called you and said, "Hey, want to come back as Chakotay?" Would you say, "Sure"? Would you say, "Well, what what are your ideas?" I would have to read it first. Mm -hmm. You know, I I would really have to read it first, and if it was just a uh, for instance, there was um, there was a, 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 a series called uh, it was a comedy that was on uh, Fox not too long ago. The name of the ship was uh, also the name of the series, uh, the Fire. Orwell, oh, Orville, Orville, the Orville, right. and um, they had some of the Voyager actors on, and but I was really. I was really surprised that they had nothing to do. They had one or two lines, uh, you know, and it was, it was just like, hey, let's get him to be in it, you know, to say these two lines. Yeah, let's get him, you know. And uh, I was just, I, I would not do that. Well, the, uh, Tim, just to be on the show, you know, it's not enough for me. That's yeah, I want to be on the Orville. No, uh, you know, and I don't necessarily want to be on uh, uh, Picard. Sure. Picardo, yes, I would. I would do Picardo if there was such a <laughs> <laughs> But Picard, um, it would have uh, to be, it would have to be a good reason to do it, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I think what you're alluding to is like Tim's role in in the Orville wasn't. It, it was, I don't know. I, I can't remember who it was. Tim. Tim had a. They didn't give him a ton, but uh, Bob Picardo on the Orville, he had a couple episodes. It's a really good role. Uh, yeah, that's thing. right. That's right. He played the father of the. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, Picard, they're doing a good job of giving people good roles that come back. Frakes and that's Marina good. and all them. But anyway. But, you know, they can always do the, the trick that they did to me once. I, I was I was guest starring. On, this was years ago in the 80s. I was guest starring on a TV series that was pretty hot at the time. Um, it was a two part cliffhanger at the end of the season, right? And Ed Asner, it was a great cast. Oh. So they sent me the they sent me the scripts and I read them. I thought, wow, this is really good. But the, the night before we got to do one of the scenes that I loved the most, they had given all that stuff to Ed Asner, all my dialogue to Ed Asner. So he did that. 
you know. <laughs> and so that's that's what I'm always afraid of, you know. In, in television, once you've signed the contract, they can do whatever they want with you. Mm -hmm. One time, I I was doing a film. I signed up to do a film. I went to wardrobe, and um, one of the aides came to me and said, "Oh yeah, here's your new script." And I said, "Oh okay." So I was flipping through it, waiting around to get my wardrobe, you know. And then I I noticed there was a key scene missing that that my character was in, and for me it was the it was the most uh, crucial scene for my character, so I could have like an arc, you know. Without it, there's no arc. So I called my agent. I said, hey, uh, I'm not doing this movie if they don't put that scene back. And he said, Robert, what, what do you mean? You're, 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 you're scheduled to, to start day after tomorrow. I said, no, I haven't signed anything, so I'm not going to do it if they don't put that scene back. I, I signed up to do a particular script, and this is not the same script anymore. Right. He goes, oh, my God, let me get back to you. Well. The director called me, pretty well-known director. He said, Robert, come on, what's the matter? Come on, we're going to start. We, we love you. We want to. I said, no, well, uh, if you love me, put the scene back. He goes, no, you know, we, we just thought it wasn't really necessary. And I said, well, but it is necessary for my character, I believe. So let's let's just make this short and, and, and sweet. Uh, if it's not in, I'm not going to do it. And he was mad and he did not like it, but I said, sorry, no. Um, and so you just don't know. You just don't know what they'll try to pull because it's happened to me. You know? well, so I could, I, could, right there. I, could get a, I could get a great script from Picard and, um, and then show up on the set and it's, it's all changed. All the great dialogue has been given to uh, Patrick Stewart, you know. Well, we believe that the blah, blah, you know, and he's got all the great lines and I'm just going <laughs> to right, on. <laughs> and if I've signed I the know, contract, there's nothing I can do about it. I, I know exactly what you mean. I've been in a similar situation where I was reoccurring on a show and they called me, said, would you like to do another episode? I said, sure, sign me up. You know, I've already been on the show, already know. They said, but we want you to read this script first. And I said, no, I don't have to read it. I, I, I'm good. <laughs> and <laughs> then they say, no, just read the script. When they said it again, I was like, okay, what is, what is <laughs> in this script? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then when I read the script, I was like, no, I, you're right. You guys are right. I, I, I see why you wanted me to read it. I don't want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, at least they had the good, the good, uh, the, the, the you know, at least they warned you, gave you the, you know, yeah, these two, these two, these two times that I'm, that I've uh, told you about that I was not told about it. So until I got there, you know, Robert, yeah. we've got about uh, 10 minutes left. One question. I, I, I don't remember if I've asked you this before, but it's something I know I've at least mentioned to you is I really, really need you to start doing audio books. You've got the coolest, silkiest smooth voice of anybody in any Star Trek franchise. And please either tell me that you are doing audiobooks or that you would consider it because we all need to be able to just relax and listen to the smooth stylings of Mr. Robert Beltran. I do Patrick Stewart's voice in the audio <laughs> <laughs> Once upon a time. Um, oh, that's really nice of you. Thank you. Um, I would I would love to do it. No, I haven't been I haven't been asked to do it. I, I was asked when we the last uh, after we had finished Voyager. Right after that, um, they wanted me to write one of those uh, novels. You know those Voyager novels, Star Trek novels. Right. And um, I I I said, well, I I I talked to the editors, and they I said, well, I don't really know what I could write, you know. I don't really, I'm not really a science fiction guy. And they said, well, don't worry about it. We'll do it, and we'll just put your name on it. I said, oh, really? Okay. <laughs> I said, no, because what if I what if I hate it? What if you guys do a lousy job and I don't like it? My name is my that's my name. And they said, oh, mm. come on now. So I just didn't do it, you know. Uh, but uh, uh, audio, audio books. I would love to. I would love to do. 
You have a great voice. Definitely could listen to you uh, reading a book all day. Um, I have a question. Very nice of you. Thank uh, you. Who Thank are you. some of the people that influenced you uh, growing up and to kind of help mold you into the man you've become today? Mm -hmm. uh, you mean uh, performance-wise, actors? Uh, yeah, actors. Yes, um, mentors. Just you know, you seem you seem like you have this, you know, really good understanding of the world and 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 just this broad understanding of the craft. And I just felt like maybe there were people that influenced you heavily or, or if you just found it on your own um, as an up-and-coming actor? Well, I, I had the good fortune of, um, of um, working with my... I went to Bakersfield College, junior college, before I transferred over to Fresno State. And there was a, there was a director there, professor that was... Um, just great, and he took he took special interest in me. He cast me in everything that he did, and um, he was really good. He 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 saw that I had some potential, but he also saw that I was kind of constricted um, emotionally or something, maybe you know. So one time he got me out on the he got me out on the stage alone. And he, he said, "Now do a cartwheel." I said, "What?" Yeah, do a cartwheel. Okay, stand on your head. Can you stand on your head? Yeah. Climb that rope. And then he go, and while I was doing this stuff, he goes, uh, "How's your father doing?" I said, "My father is doing good. He's is he living? Do you guys live together?" And I said, "No, no. We were divorced. He, my mom and him were divorced when I was when I was young." Oh well, how's your mother? I said, "Oh, she's great. She's great." And he said, "Do you love your mother?" I said, "Yeah, I love my mother very much. She's so." Um, he was poking at me, you know, psychologically, um, find it, trying to find. Uh, and at the time, I thought it was kind of strange, but it was it was kind of liberating too at the end. Uh, and um, um, I, I felt like it was okay to like take off masks, you know, just you know, get rid of the masks and just be be uh, free as yourself, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Because I, I think that, I think that that's one of the things that people have a misconception about acting is that we're, all we have is who we are, and that's that's the only experience that we have, and that's where we go, that's where we come from, right? I mean, yeah. Um, otherwise, we're just imitating. I, I you know, I, I don't want to imitate Marlon Brando because he's a good actor. I, I don't want to be myself. You know, I want to. I want it coming from me, from my own experience. So. Um, uh, he was really, really influential. And then I had another one at Fresno State. But also I read a lot of books too, Sirac. You know, uh, um, I read uh, a great Sidney Poitier uh, uh, bio. And uh, I, I just love him. He's, he's, he's an incredible actor. Um, Anthony Quinn. John Garfield. Mm -hmm. Peter O'Toole, you know, because what you can't get in real life, I, we just lost you, Sirach. What you can't I'm get in here, real life. Hear you. Okay, what we what we can't get in real life, you you go to the next best thing, and that's like a a book, you know, right? For for history yeah. and, and that sort of thing. So so you know, I, you know, I mentioned my mother, but she was my biggest influence by far. Right. She would have been a great actress. You know, uh, <laughs> people are saying right here, Robert and Ciroc have good chemistry. You know, we're thinking, all right, buddy cop show. That's it. <laughs> Perfect. Buddy cop. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Good cop and bad. I think Robert's probably bad cop, right? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Too hard. Too hard. Let me. No, I'll go either way. Uh, I'm sure yeah, he's got the full way. range. Yeah, that's that's the nature of acting. You can cover both sides. Yeah, I, I would love that. Uh, we have just a few minutes left. Uh, you are still acting. Is there a kind of character in particular that you would you've never gotten a chance to do that you always want to do? Like maybe like the the wacky neighbor or or the psychopath <laughs> or the or the psychopath killer or 
somebody with a disability or something? Is there something that you haven't quite explored yet that you feel like you'd like to do at some I point? I would like to do more comedy, that's for sure. Um, yeah. I did two pilots that were comedies that I that just never went. Um, really? Well, can you tell us what they were? One of them was called uh, Family Martinez. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it was a really fun, it was written by uh, and produced by uh, uh, Tommy Chong. No of way. Chong, of How did that Chong, not yeah. get picked up? <laughs> I don't know. Stupid, you know. Um, uh. And it was about two friends that had grown up through the barrio and became, uh, one of them became the lawyer and the other one became just a, a goof up, you know, goofball. Which were you? I was doing? the lawyer. I was the lawyer. Nice. So I was like the straight man too. Mm -hmm. The straight man with a lot of jokes himself, but you know. Um, and then there was another one. Um, it was um, it was a Western called Rio Shannon. And um, that didn't go either, but that was, that was like more drama comedy, I think. Mm-hmm. God, missed opportunities. A Western yeah. and, and you playing like the straight man in a comedy, but with jokes of your own. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I Lost have a question for you, Robert. Um, in my experience, at least from my observation, a lot of uh, the Star Trek actors end up into a certain bo box of typecast. And I want to know if you've experienced any kind of uh, typecast. Uh, or that you feel you have from uh, from your experiences? Yeah. Um, probably to an extent, you know, uh, I think it's inevitable that when you're on a show for seven years, um, they're going to see you as that. The, the nice thing about it was that um, about those seven years in playing Chicote is it was not a one dimensional type character. So um, I think that if you look beyond the tattoo and the Starfleet uh, uniform, there was some um, there were some episodes that that could have been taken out of out of context, out of the Star Trek um, story, and put in a, another story, and it would work just as just as well. Um, yes. Um, so I, I'm sure, I'm sure some people in the casting sessions, they say, what about Robert Beltran? They go, ah, you know, mm -hmm. we, we, what, what has he done? But uh, he's only done uh, Star Trek Voyager. We don't need that. You know, could be. And butterflies. And but. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Hey guys, uh, sorry, we're just about out of time. Uh, very quickly though, um, like you can sing here. Uh, Rico E. Anderson says, you guys got to get this buddy cop show made. Uh, <laughs> that's all. Hey, that I, I guess so. I'm, I'm not going to object to that. Rashid says, thank you so much, Robert, for doing this. Chakotay's oh, just I, I recognize Rashid from uh, the Twitter account. Great. And so, uh, Katie, nah. Katie Carr. Katie Carr is here. Right. Oh, she's one of the ones. the best ballerina she's always posting tons of voyager love we love katie Carr. yes yeah yeah so yeah. uh we do want to thank you so much for taking the time for this uh we know it's not easy when everybody everybody's demanding your time here and there yeah. and we're really really appreciative of you doing this and uh the fans really appreciate it very much as well i'm always happy to talk to you guys oh sorak you said always yeah Hmm? Hey, all right. That's a good thing. Uh, and, it, and it's so good to see you. I mean, that hair, man, that hair is just, it's got to be back on TV. You got the, you got the great hair. <laughs> that it's hair like, and that voice. Yep. It's got, Thanks. you got to. <laughs> let's, let's find something we can do together, Sirac. That would be fun. I would love to do that. I would we'll love to do it. Happen. That. We'll make it happen. Yeah. Stephanie Williams says, Butterflies is awesome. And Eve England out in Wales says she'd love to hear some of your music. You have music? Yeah, I mean, I, I've been composing, so I do have. I've I've built up a little great library of stuff. I don't. I'm I'm hesitant to let people hear it. 
Okay. Well, if you're ever ready, we'll add it in the description. Uh, yeah. Box okay. All right. Yes. Um, there was a one of the names uh, I forgot her. She came, uh, her name. She well, anyway. She's a uh, she tweets. She was like the second or third one to go back. Um, very nice. Very nice uh, person. Katie Carr. Good. Uh, not Katie. It came after her. Um, Stephanie. There was. Stephanie. Stephanie. Oh. Okay. Was it Stephanie? It may have been Eve England. No, one before that, I think. Oh, I'm out of names then. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Anne, Anne, <laughs> Anne Marie, that's my guest too. She's always amazing. <laughs> We're just going to start throwing names out. <laughs> Sally. Oh, there's Morgan, Morgan, <laughs> yeah. Nike, and uh, anyway, I'm just, I'm just, um, I'm just recognizing a lot of, a lot of names. Mm -hmm. Stephanie Williams. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Stephanie Williams. Okay, yeah. so we, we do have to run. We've got a video coming up in just a couple minutes. It's our closing ceremonies. And thank you so much for rescheduling with us to slide in right under the gun, Robert. This is absolutely been awesome. And that was my fault. We were supposed to meet last uh, Thursday, or I can't remember the day, but I just Saturday. couldn't do it. Saturday. Saturday. Mm -hmm. So um, thanks for putting up with that. Absolutely. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I'm, look, and I'm looking forward to our cop show. Uh, we'll be <laughs> yes, <coming> soon. Yes, <laughs> let's do it. Looking and uh, make, it. make sure everybody out there check out this Butterflies movie. I will be watching it myself. It's available on Amazon Prime. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks for the plug. Right, and it's in the uh, it's in the description box below, guys. So check it out real quick. Enjoy it for your uh, your weekly viewing, and uh, we'll see you on the next video. 1,000 thank yous to Mr. Robert Beltran. We'll see you on the next thank one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's do it again. <laughs>